Hi guys, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll be discussing dopamine, so let's jump straight in. Here we go! Dopamine has been used in critical care for many years and is frequently administered in the intensive care departments, emergency departments and used in some emergency medical services systems around the world for critically ill patients. It has a role in our ACLS management for bradycardia and plays a role in the management of shock. In this video, we'll be discussing the mechanism of action of dopamine, the indications, the dosage, the precautions, and the side effects of dopamine. Dopamine is an endogenous catecholamine and stimulates the dopamine, alpha, and beta adrenergic receptors in the body. Our focus is on the alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors. In the heart, the beta-1 affects increased chronotropy and increased inotropy. In beta-2, it affects the bronchial smooth muscles that leads to the dilation of the airways. Alpha-1 activation leads to the constriction of vascular smooth muscle and also affects myocardial tissue, leading to increased inotropy. What makes dopamine such an interesting drug is that its effects are dose-dependent. Lower doses, typically less than 10 mics per kg per minute, is seen as the cardiac dose that works to increase the heart rate. Above 10 mics per kg per minute is seen as the vasopressor dose that helps to increase the blood pressure. Years ago, we also had what we call the renal dose, which was less than 5 mics per kg per minute. Recent studies question the benefit because the positive inotropic and chronotropic effects can increase myocardial oxygen demand, leading to myocardial ischemia, especially in patients with heart disease. Several studies show that low dose of dopamine can't reverse renal dysfunction and may do more harm than good. Let's review the indications of dopamine. Dopamine is a second-line drug for systematic bradycardia after atropine or where transcutaneous pacing is ineffective. It can be used for hypertension and the management of shock unresponsive to fluid administration. It is also part of the American Heart Association post-resuscitation care guidelines. See the links in the description below of previous videos we made about the ACLS bradycardia management and transcutaneous pacing. The AHA recommends infusion rates for dopamine between 5 to 20 mics per kg per minute. It is always important to titrate dose against the effect required and ensure to taper slowly. Let's review some of the precaution. Always correct hypervolemia with volume replacement before initiating dopamine. Also do not mix dopamine with sodium bicarb. We should use it with caution in patients with cardiogenic shock with accompanying congestive heart failure. Some of the side effects are not limited to includes tachyarrhythmias and at higher doses it may cause ventricular tachycardia, palpitations, nausea and vomiting, headache, anxiety, asthmatic episodes and extravasation may result in tissue necrosis. In recent years, dopamine has fallen out of favor due to a host of adverse effects with no additional benefits when compared to norepinephrine and epinephrine. 
Dopamine is still part of the American Heart Association's 2020 guidelines. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe and smash that notification bell. And please don't forget to leave a comment down below as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. We'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.